In this video, we'll go deeper into the advanced settings on the yearbook panels. I'll begin by importing a PSPA file with the LumaPix extensions for department, title, and salutation. So they get copied off the CD into the local hard drive. But this time around, instead of um, simply choosing a preset, I'm going to jump into the advanced mode. So uh, I'll click on advanced and the first thing that catches my eye is these controls here. Um, this is the map. Just to go sideways for a moment, if you drag an image into the canvas in PhotoFusion, this shows up next to you and it allows you to control things easily just by bringing my mouse over the border, pressing the mouse button and dragging left and right, I can adjust the border thickness and I can adjust the shadow. Click here and then drag left and right, up and down. I can adjust the settings on this frame. Same thing goes here. If I move over the uh, frame and then press the mouse button and drag left and right, I can adjust the um, frame settings. If I hold the control key down, I can adjust the inset between frames, which is nice. I can adjust their shadow and so on. So this is the map. And where we start by default is here in the population section. So by importing the, the CD of kids, I got a database for whom we know a grade and we know a department and we know which group they're a part of. Um, you can populate a panel using whatever you like. I can say, for example, I'd like to find everybody who is in Miss Derrock's class. When I click apply, it will go through the database, find all the individuals it can find, and populate the panel. And I'll just adjust the panel a little bit like this. So that's one way to do it, is to say, um, make a panel for Miss Derrock, and I can see just by glancing at the pages that I've got four pages worth of students uh, by doing that. So if I wanted to, I could go um, here, add a new page, and populate it, maybe put a paper texture in the background, and then say uh, that I want to add a panel and this time around show only teacher equals um, Germain. That'll work. Um, we can now see that I've got two sets of panels, Mrs. Derrock's class and Mr. Germain's class, but honestly that's not the easiest way to work with PhotoFusion because it means you've got to keep track of all these groups separately. What I'm going to do is just press Control delete um, to remove all of the Germain class and we'll just stick with the, uh, the first group which is the Sterox class. The reason I say it's easier to, to work another way is to say don't do a separate query for every teacher. Just say find everybody who's in a group student pages and hit apply. That'll find all of the students and all of the teachers and then put them into a single very long query result. Here it's uh, 15 pages worth of um, kids. Now you'll notice that all the adults have bumped up to the top and all the kids are below. Why is that? It's because we haven't said to group the results of this yet. We've gone through a database and found hundreds of individuals, but if we look at the grouping, we can see that there is no grouping applied yet. If I say group it by the teacher, then we start to get useful results. We find that there's a clump, which is Mrs. Derrock's class, and then another clump starting on page uh, 5, which is Mr. Germain, and then Mr. Hebert, and so on. If I wanted to move um, one of these groups around, the simplest way to do it is just to click on the group and then say move up. For example, we now have uh, Derek followed by Eber followed by Germain. If you wanted to remove somebody's group, um, I'll just pin the pages hover up so we can see what we're doing here. I can say that I would like to disable the Hebert group. I can see that Hebert starts here and goes to page 6 where it ends and then is followed by Mr. Germain. So I'll just say that I want to knock out Mr. Hebert. I'll say disable that group and now we get the end of Derrock and then we get to the start of Germain. He's simply being knocked out. So I'll, I'll turn him back on. So that's the population. Um, the only other thing to point out is the um, sorting you have individuals within the class. Here there's Mr. Hebert followed by his students. And the reason that he's at the top of the class is because we're sorting by priority. As a teacher, Mr. Hebert right here has a priority of three. All of the students have a priority of five. 
and that's why the teachers are automatically bubbling up to the top of the class as you see here. Uh, you can invert this sorting if you want to, just click here and all of the inverted, all, all of the sorting will happen just in the reverse order. The next area would be the panels. Um, by clicking here, you can see a bunch of controls related to the panels, including the, fra the frame width, and if you drag to the left, you'll see that you're reducing the number of, the, the, the size of each panel frame, and therefore increasing the number that fit within the space that we have available. So I'll just drag left and right to adjust it. You can also work by uh, the column and row count. If I say, for my own reasons, I want to have exactly um, two columns per page, then I would just click and drag it over to two, and now I'll have two, period. Um, you, you can experiment with these settings here and say, um, I want to have exactly two, no matter what the frame width is. And so now, by dragging the frame width to the left, we'll see that we still have two frames, but that the uh, the frame sizes are growing. I just encourage you to play with these settings. You'll, you'll discover what they do. Uh, I'm going to change this back to a higher number of columns. And we've got a useful set back again. You can adjust the spacing between the uh, rows by dragging this control. Um, and you can also adjust the number of featured teachers by dragging the featured to the right. So we're f now, for example, we're uh, featuring the first teacher in every class. Knockouts, this allows you to either manually knock pictures out or do it automatically. I'll just click remove manual and then drag another picture on top to illustrate automatic occlusion. Like this. So that's what the knockouts control does. Um, and I'll delete this frame. This allows you to choose the orientation, uh, whether you want the frames to be centered on the page or on the right or on the filling the width of the page. Um, the last row actually behaves differently from everything else, so you can have the last row be in the gutter or centered up if you like. And then finally, the um, top, bottom, left, and right allow you to resize, uh, moving the top, uh, moving the gutter out. So you can reshape the, the panel this way if you like. So there's a lot of control here on the, uh, the panel settings. If you go to the header, you'll see that you've got um, the choice of just using the group name uh, once at the beginning of each group. So this is the Germain class followed by nothing, followed by the Lavalier class. Or you can say, no, you want it to be continued on subsequent pages. So there's Lavalier and then the Lavalier continued header. The alignment allows you to put it on the edge or the center of a page like this. You can change the continued text to say, for example, continued if you like, and it will just do the right thing. The size allows you to adjust how big the, uh, the header is. You can change the font and uh, play with attributes such as is it bold or is it italic and so on. And then you do have control over the shadow and the color of the shadow for the header like that. The uh, labels allow you to set the uh, font and the color and so on um, for the labels which appear on the side of the text. And you can adjust the width and space um, which was given over to the labels by dragging these controls. Again, truly, the simplest thing is just to play with these controls. There's a lot of them. The, the nicest thing to say about all of this is that when you're satisfied with the look of uh, your um, panel, you can actually go back to the simple mode and say, save a preset for this. And we'll call this red header, all students by teacher. 
And so now that I've taken the time to build this look, it's straightforward for me to say, okay, let's build a staff page using the simple preset. Um, or I can change my mind and say, let's go back and do red header, all students by teacher. It requeries the database and on every one of the pages applies the red shadow, the different fonts that I chose to create the panel like this. Um, getting back to the advanced mode then, we also have control over the frames. And a common question is, I would like to have my students be inside ovals, can we do that? And the answer is sure, you just click on the border and instead of adjusting the color, for example, by dragging the, the border color chips um, or playing with the opacity of the border like this, um, you would go to the gradient and say you'd like to enable a circular gradient in which the midpoint is out like this. So you can adjust these things, um, for example, feathering off the edge a little bit. And if I want to, once again, I can save a preset. Uh, let's say that I only want to save the, the look here, the circular gradient. I don't want to save the query, I just want to save the fact that it's um, in a circular hole. So I'll say, save this as a preset called circular gradient. And so now this would allow me to say, um, I'd like to have the staff by department, which applies absolutely everything. And I'll just go to the first page of this and then use the style that we just created, the circular gradient, where we have the first featured and then um, everybody else listed side by side. So that's how you would reuse a preset for the circular gradient. One other thing I'd like to point out is the uh, scope. I'm, I'm just going to um, sort of reset to a simple example. The staff by department. Um, if I make changes, for example, to the border thickness, it's being applied to both groups on this page, the administration and the faculty. By saying only apply it to the administration, I can now say I want the administration to be like this. And then to the faculty, I would like it to be like this with uh, more of a space between them. So the, the, what the scoping is doing is choosing whether you want to apply it to all panels anywhere in the book, only to this set of groups, which would mean all of them. I can now say I want all of their shadows to be like this, or to just one specific group, the administration, the faculty, or the support staff, who are on the second page, by the way. If I click on support staff, we'll see that I'm, I'm now taken to the second page where that group is where I can say, for example, that I would like them to have a, um, a border which is this color. So that, that's scoping, and it allows you to determine a different look for different faculty or, um, versus administration or um, teachers to be treated differently and so on. Uh, the final point to make is the uh, modes. We have a locked mode, which means that no matter what you do, you can't hurt this panel anymore. If you were to exclude somebody, it will not be reflected in this uh, panel set. It's literally locked off. And there's also a manual mode. This allows you to grab people and resize them uh, interactively like this. So you have a lot of flexibility when you start working with this mode. You can say, just move everybody, including the faculty header, um, down and work like this. So that's what the um, manual mode allows you to do. Um, I would point out that be careful if you click go back to auto, you'll be asked, are you sure? Because when you say yes, it's going to reflow the database automatically. Now you might notice that this teacher has been um, cropped and why is that? It's because if you add a student, and I'll just take the time to do this, I'm going to go to my hard drive and find a picture that's the best that we could do of a kid um, shot wild. It wasn't on the portrait day. The kid just had a, a candid like this available. Well, let, let's use this um, as a portrait. I'm going to add the student to the database, um, make him into a student in Miss Derrock's grade 12 class. There we go. So now when we go back to um, having students by
feature. We're going to find that kid, but of course the cropping is completely wrong because it was a candid, it wasn't formally set up. Because this is a panel, if I simply try to click on that image, you'll see that I'm, I'm knocking frames out. Remember, that's how you occlude, right? I'll just make space to drop a picture in like this, right? So th th this is what normally happens when you click on a, um, a, a frame. So the question then becomes, well, how do you frame this kid correctly? And the answer is that you go to manual mode you click on the kid and you crop as best you can to make it match everything else. And then when you go back to auto mode, the cropping is remembered. If we reset the cropping, that would be bad. You would have lost the work that you did on, on getting this kid framed up. So that's the reason why the principle wasn't recropped when I went back from manual to automatic mode.